Well, thank you for uh, staying with us. Obviously, we haven't had uh, much time. We have to uh, speed up the, uh, the session. Uh, but we'll have the time to uh, talk about everything that has to do with the two companies that uh, are represented here today. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a local journalist. I'm Dimitris Karaklidis, editor-in-chief uh, of Magnesia Newspaper and magnesianews.gr. Uh, and I'm really happy to host this session with two, well, local um, businessmen who are based, uh, uh, their businesses are based in, uh, in Magnesia, in Volos actually, and uh, they're developing technologies that are really shaping, reshaping the industries uh, of uh, food, basically, and not only in food, uh, in the food industry. We'll start with um, uh, the younger uh, entrepreneur, and uh, excuse me, I have I've written down a few questions as I'm not an expert on the technologies that they are um, dealing with. Uh, so I'll start. Uh, well, th these are questions for both of you, actually, uh, for both um, uh, Dimitris Karagounis from Olivex, which is a, a technology uh, company. Uh, dealing with uh, industrial processes and um, digital transformation. And uh, I have uh, next to me uh, Sotiris Bekros from Cuba Vision, which is uh, uh, a, a company dealing with uh, processes in the industry, uh, the digitizing processes and uh, tracking uh, data. He will explain to you in more detail in a few minutes. So I'll Start with a question for both of you. Uh, would you like to describe uh, briefly what your company does for the industrial sector? Would you like to start, Sotiris or Dimitris? So, thank you very much for, invite, for inviting us. It is a, a pleasure to be here today, especially for me because uh, this place is a bit special. Uh, I'm a graduate of the Electrical Computer Engineering Department here in Volos. Uh, and again, it is a great initiative to have uh, those conferences and in general the, uh, such initiatives in, uh, in Volos. Uh, as Mr. Karaklidis said, I'm Dimitris Garagounis. I'm the founder of uh, Olivex. We're a software company based in Volos. Uh, we started unofficially, let's say, 2018, officially in 2020 uh, by a team of engineering, engineer graduates of the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department. We work on the digital transformation of the industrial sector and even more specifically for food and beverage industries. So uh, what we do, we have developed a digital twin platform that is able to integrate uh, with uh, several uh, types of industries, focusing again on the food and beverage sector. And we are able to gather data for, uh, from different, uh, let's say, pieces of equipment, uh, production lines, etc with a goal to utilize all those data and provide insights and analytics for uh, the end customer. Uh, we have uh, quite a good, quite sufficient uh, customer base in Greece, and currently we're making our initial steps in Europe, targeting uh, Central Europe. Thank you, Demetrius. Sotiris? Hi, everybody. My name is Sotiris Bekos. I am the managing director at uh, Cube Industrial Inspection Systems. Uh, our company is based here in Volos. We've been around for uh, 20 years now. We started from uh, automations, from uh, factory automations, uh, and uh, later we moved to industrial inspection systems. So we started in uh, 2010 to work with this uh, exciting technology, machine vision technology. Um, our approach was at the beginning to install some simple systems and uh, solve some simple problems, uh, problems which uh, are about the defects on the produced products. Uh, later, in about uh, three years, we uh, started to install more complicated systems. And now, after uh, 13, 14 years, uh, we are at the edge of the technology. We develop and install uh, inc incorporated uh, uh, optical inspection systems with multi-camera technology uh, for very fast speed lines. Uh, where we differ is that uh, from other companies 
is that we have uh, total solutions for uh, many kind of uh, production lines. Uh, our systems are from Inox design, they have industrial uh, equipment inside them, and very uh, high-tech software. Our customers are here in Greece and uh, abroad. Um, that's for now. Uh, let's move on. Um, obviously, uh, for uh, everyone here, uh, the the depth of the knowledge is, uh, uh, surpasses the my knowledge of uh, uh, what we're talking about. Obviously, so I'm going to ask some silly questions uh, for those uh, who may be watching and would like to know uh, what are the greatest um, uh, challenges uh, you deal with uh, in the process of um, introducing uh, technologies that have to do with uh, artificial intelligence um, into uh, older production lines, older factories that have maybe a very limited uh, uh, level of uh, digitization. Would you like to start, Dimitris? Yeah, sure. Uh, basically, it is a, a really important question for us because uh, that exactly is the, let's say, the first part of our value proposition. What we can do currently is to integrate into older lines, let's say lines built in the early 20s, uh, or uh, let's say 15 years ago. Uh, so we have the ability to integrate in such lines and collect data from such lines. So the, the part of the value proposition is uh, in some way to help the customer when the time comes to, to introduce the factory or in general the, the group of factories into the industry for uh, era, let's say, not just to uh, drop all the equipment and buy a new one, just to be able to, to, to work in such technologies. What we can do is to integrate in older lines, collect data, because uh, the interesting part is that uh, in every factory there is a, a great amount of data uh, con uh, created every day. So our challenge is how to consume that data and how to extract value uh, from that data. So that is one of the parts of our value proposition. We're able to integrate in older lines, we're able to transform that lines, into, let's say, Industry 4 ready just by using software. Uh, so for us, that was a, let's say, a gap uh, that we saw in the, in the market. And after working several hardware projects, because we started in a more recent approach, but we started with hardware projects, the first thing that we understand is it is quite difficult to scale. And a tech startup uh, with some engineers, it is not able to, to, to compete in some way uh, giants, industry giants, uh, like, uh, let's say, Siemens, like uh, other companies uh, which are constructing hardware for a lot of years. Uh, so the interesting part is how to use the existing hardware and how to utilize data from the existing hard hardware to extract some added value. Uh, so for us, it was not, let's say, a challenge, but more than an opportunity. So three. In our case, I think that uh, uh, the kind of factory of the production line, whether it's old production or new production line, is not that important. Uh, in fact, if a production line is older than others, then the defects on the products are going to be much more. So uh, if we examine it uh, from, the, from a necessity point of view, uh, yes, the older factories need more vision inspection systems, and uh, maybe they, have, uh, uh, they, are, they need more uh, AI solutions. Um, the problem usually is to the head of the uh, industry, to the plant managers. They have to be convinced that this kind of technology is going to help them. I mean that they have to be convinced that they have to spend all this, uh, all this amount of money to install an AI industrial inspection system and they uh, are expecting the result of the investment to be uh, as fast as possible. Of course, there are a lot of projects where AI uh, inspection systems could be installed, but first you have to convince uh, the factory that it is worth it. Um, well, I'll, I'll recall to my mind a, a TV spot a commercial uh, by a mobile communications company that uh, was uh, actually promoting uh, some services. And uh, the businessman who was uh, 
who wanted to, to get into the digital era uh, didn't want to hear anything about it. They, he just wanted to, to know how it's going to save him money. And that's the, the key issue. So uh, how, how easy is it to, to um, uh, speak to um, people, from, for example, from uh, SMEs, small and medium-sized companies, which is very uh, uh, difficult to, to explain what your technology does. Uh, how, what, what are the challenges that you have already faced in explaining your technology to people who are from who are old school? Let's let's say it. So, in a nutshell, the answer is that it is not easy. <laughs> first of all, uh, the thing is. Uh, it is basically based on the approach that every company uh, follows. For example, what we do to enter into the market is that initially, uh, after starting the company, we search uh, for, uh, for some, let's say, partners and not customers, because it is more like a partner, to co-develop a solution and co-develop a case study. So what we achieve to do is to integrate the platform in a factory, let's say, develop a case study uh, in collaboration with a customer and ended up with some results. So in the second customers, uh, it will be just uh, to explain how uh, a competitor of, uh, of him has, uh, has used our platform, has achieved great results, achieved savings, because the magic word is savings, uh, especially in the industry. Uh, and exactly as Mr. Beko said, uh, the plant manager only cares about how to, uh, uh, how to improve the efficiency, how to lower the cost, and how to improve the productivity. So, you should start the, the, the approach by the potential in savings, the potential in, uh, let's say, production capacity and other important things, and after that, explain the technology. So for us, the solution would be to start with key partners, develop case studies, and after that, promote that case studies in other similar industries. And we're currently also uh, doing the exact same thing in Central Europe. So, uh, Well, from my experience, I think that um, when you are talking to a customer, uh, if he doesn't want to do the investment, he won't do it. I think that it's like the, the mature apple. The apple is going to fall finally. When he feels ready, okay, uh, of course, we have some ways to persuade them, to convince that this is the right decision. Uh, so you, many times we start small. So we install a small system uh, in order for the factory to see the results, to be convinced that yes, uh, it's okay with them, it fits, it fits their uh, uh, needs, and then we uh, go to the next step by installing a bigger uh, system. Thank you. Let's move on to uh, more specific questions for Dimitris from Olivex. How is uh, AI being used to predict equipment breakdowns and prevent problems before they happen? Is that possible? Okay. Uh, in general, for sure it is possible. In general, every, <laughs> yeah, every company working on the sector currently tries to utilize AI to do more. Uh, how we do that and why, how we utilize the AI, the first challenge was to understand what the machine uh, is currently doing. So the first thing that we do is a classification. So we, uh, we collect a lot of raw data from uh, different uh, machines or different, uh, let's say, lines, and the first challenge is to understand what the line is doing because industry, at the end of the day, is a, a place that every day the operators do repeatable processes. They go every day and do exactly the same things. And a specific machine can do several things. So the first thing is to understand in real time without any user input what the machine is doing. So let's say that it is an industrial process named mixing. So we utilize the AI to understand what, when a machine is doing the mixing process, the exact second that the process started and the exact, the exact second that the process ended. And the second step is to uh, store all that, all that records of industrial processes and have historical data. When you have batch data, because from that time we don't uh, speak about raw data, but for batch data, you are able to utilize historical data and do a lot of things. Uh, some things related to, to, to historical data are predictions or forecasting. So let's say in the sixth minute of a uh, mixing process, you are able to know the estimation of the energy consumption uh, of the process uh, by his end, let's say two hours from now. 
so in most cases, when a problem occurs, uh, the production operators and in general the, the experts of the production line is able to, to do some corrective actions uh, and fix problems before they, they occur or while, at, uh, while the problems is, uh, are at their beginning. So they can able again to save uh, money, save resources and improve the efficiency. Uh, so from our scope, uh, that is the, let's say, the workflow. So sustainability is a big concern in industry. How can AI help companies use resources more efficiently and reduce waste, which is a critical factor in uh, food and beverages? Sector. Basically, uh, that is an extension of the previous question, because if you're able to predict uh, problems and fix the problems uh, at their beginning, uh, you are able to save resources. Sustainability by now, in general, uh, from my understanding, most of the industries and in general most of the, the industry people, uh, when they talk about uh, sustainability, they mean more about the ESG, uh, more about the footprint, the carbon footprint, in general, and things related to the environment. But also another, another pillar of the sustainability is the profit. Uh, so when you are able to predict problems in real time and solve them and be proactive instead of being reactive, you are also able to optimize the resources, improve the profit and the efficiency. So I think that it is an extension of the previous, uh, previous question. Thank you, Dimitris. Uh, now, two, a couple of questions for uh, Sotiris from uh, Cuba Vision. How is AI helping industries improve quality, especially in spotting defects or issues in products, which is actually what, what you do? Uh, we don't only do AI, we do a lot of things, but uh, the major goal is to manage to detect defects. Uh, with the usual, with the uh, until now technology, the, you, you should program the system with rule-based uh, algorithms. But there are some cases where the rule-based algorithms don't work. So we have to do something else. Uh, all these years, we didn't do anything with uh, these cases. We couldn't solve them. With AI, we hope that it's going to be easier to solve these, uh, these problems. For example, imagine that you have a yogurt cup, an empty yogurt cup. And in there, during the process, uh, some foreign objects may be found. But these foreign objects are very small, are not like uh, stone or uh, something big. They're really small, and uh, you, you may confuse them with the color of the, uh, of the outer of the cup. Uh, in this case, a rule-based system would not detect the defects in the cup. So you need something clever, something which understands that what I see is not the color of the graphics of the cup yogurt, but it's something different. Okay, there you could install an AI system. So yes, AI uh, um, technology can help factories overcome problems that could not be overcome until now. So what, what are Cuba's plans for the future in order to remain competitive? Uh, obviously, you have competitors, don't you? Uh, do you see AI as an opportunity or as a necessity? Of course, we have competitors, uh, mostly from uh, uh, outside of Greece, not from Greece, from abroad. Um, who invest a lot of money in development. This is a key factor uh, to manage to develop products. You have to develop products and you have to do this fast so that you can sell them and solve solutions. So first of all is uh, development, research and development. This is what you have to do. Uh, and you have to do it fast. With AI, of course, it's an opportunity, not a necessity. In fact, I think that um, we shouldn't talk about necessity or opportunity because AI is here and has come to stay. So, uh, of course, we have to see it as an opportunity to solve problems and to manage to make our uh, companies uh, more profitable and to go uh, abroad uh, of Greece. Well, I wish you luck with that, uh, obviously. Uh, and a few questions for both of you. Dimitris and Sotiris, which um, have to do with uh, um, uh, issues that uh, all of us 
are uh, really worried about, I think, well, I'm worried about. Uh, many industry workers are worried about losing their jobs. So uh, the first question has to do with how uh, possible is to retain uh, workers and jobs in the industry you are um, operating. So how are companies uh, managing the balance between AI automation and keeping jobs for workers, which is, I think, a global issue that we're facing? Dimitris? From my opinion, it is uh, like the discussion that we, uh, all of us had a couple of years ago when uh, all of that generative AI tools uh, started to go on the market. And uh, for example, uh, everyone was mentioning that uh, in five years uh, from now, we will not have software developers or software engineers or something, and we only have uh, chat GPT related tools. Uh, from my opinion, it is not a technology that can replace uh, a human being at all, but it is a technology that can be utilized by a person uh, to produce more, to increase his efficiency. Uh, it is exactly the thing that, that happens currently with, uh, with uh, the software guys and all the developers. So all of them are using uh, that tools uh, to be more productive uh, and to uh, help them in general in, in their daily routine. So I think that that would be, again, the same challenge in the next five to 10 years in industries because for sure uh, every plant manager would ask from the production operators to be able to utilize the tools. So uh, an operator should have some at least basic knowledge to understand uh, some, uh, some things and to, to understand how to utilize the tools to optimize the production processes. But uh, I think that we're quite far from, uh, from that uh, situation uh, for sure. Uh, it is something that is coming in the following years, but I think that the first step is to introduce the operators in the AI tools and in general introduce them in technology because the first step will be to introduce them in, in software in general and the second step will be to, to AI. And uh, I think that if it is a threat out there, it is quite far uh, from, uh, from us. It is. Well, in your case, I think, uh, where you put your cameras now, there were, well, in the past, there were people spotting the defect products, weren't they? Yes, so you have a lot of some kind of impact people, on that. But it was not a, a human work. It was a very difficult work, a very difficult job to inspect every, every one, each one of the products that are passing in a production line. So I think that it was better to install a camera system than to keep uh, people, and especially women, to look at the products. Uh, I think that, Dimitris, you are a little optimist about <laughs> the, the jobs. I, I'm sure that uh, a lot of jobs are going to be lost because AI does some things in a very um, different but in very good way. Uh, the good thing is that some jobs are going to be lost, but a lot of other jobs are going to be uh, arised, are, are going to arise. So people will have different jobs in the future. And of course, this road that the humanity has taken uh, is inevitable. You cannot go back. So we have to start thinking of the AI as it, it is here, not it is uh, to come. Thank you. Uh, one last question, as uh, I'm being uh, pressured by Sotiris. Uh, what is processing data, why is processing data at the edge near the machines so important in industries? And uh, one of my own questions uh, that have to do with uh, the amount of data that is being collected. When is too much data? Will we be able in the future to Will this data that is being collected today, for example, and uh, in the next years, will, be, will it be useful for us to analyze it, or will, be, will it be lost? Will it be uh, useless? In general, yes, the amount is enormous, uh, especially in, uh, in a plant that is working in uh, three different shifts. Uh, so it is working continuously uh, day by day and never stops. Uh, so the amount, and especially uh, in related with the, with the size of the equipment, the, the number of the lines and all that stuff. 
so in general, edge computing uh, can help a lot uh, in the industrial sector. First of all, it can decrease latency. Uh, so we're able to, uh, to, util to basically to exploit all that data near the line. So uh, it can increase performance and also uh, be more efficient in comparison with sending all that data to a cloud uh, system. Uh, also, it can decrease dependencies because it is usual stuff that uh, in a plant uh, in the middle of nowhere, you cannot guarantee that the internet connectivity would be uh, the best possible. So again, uh, edge computing uh, can remove the dependency of ha or having steady and really, uh, really uh, good quality internet connection. Uh, and last but not least, from my opinion, it is that it is in some way helping, uh, let's say, the management, uh, the production managers, and all uh, and all the people that are the decision makers of the industry to to be in their comfort zone because some of the data and in some cases the sensitive data remain locally, uh, so they feel more secure. In general, it is uh, more easy to deal with cybersecurity issues. Uh, I think that that is the, the most crucial uh, factors. Should we be wary of the cloud? Who can answer this? I don't know. <laughs> is there something else we can do? Probably not. The data is Everything moves too towards that uh, direction. The data is too many. And uh, edge computing, about your question, I agree with Dimitris. Uh, edge computing can be a very effective solution to a lot of processes in the factory because the decision is taken near the process from the people who know the process. Okay, the data do not travel uh, outside of the factory or do not go to a cloud. You have, you have some data and a software which pro processes data and uh, advises you to do some things. So definitely it's a good thing. The data as an amount uh, are really big, okay? And some problems uh, usually come because um, this technology has to be as good as possible because in the future it's going to be, um, the, it, some changes are going to happen to the factory and the edge computing needs to adapt these changes. So the design of the edge computing system is very critical for the uh, success or no. All right, thank you very much. I don't know if there are any questions for the two entrepreneurs. No, no questions? Well, thank you very much. In case there's a question later on, you can meet them at the uh, lobby. Uh, thank you for being with us uh, today. Um, thank you for inviting me, Sotiris Badas. Um, good afternoon. I don't know, is there a... Is the next one okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.